This video is entitled The Liars Club. There was an old show, I think it was back in the 50s. It's called The Liars Club. And people would get on there and they would tell lies and try to fool people, you know, or truth or consequences. Get on there and, and you know, and just tell a story. And people, it's the outlandish story. And people would have to wonder is, is that truth, you know, or is that a lie? And, you know, unfortunately, that's what this wicked world has become. The country I live in, Senerica, with emphasis on sin, formerly America, the Liars Club, man. You look around, the, the pastors in the church are lying to the flock. The flock are lying to themselves, believing the lies of the pastor. They're lying to those they come in contact with, spreading the false doctrine that the pastor teaches and they believe, and they spread it on, and it's a vicious circle that goes round and round, and it just leads masses of people to hell. All the politicians lie. Not all of them, but the majority of them lie. The leaders lie. The business leaders lie. Kids in school lie. Our neighbors lie. Our friends lie. Our family members lie. It's the liars club, man. It, it, it just drives me crazy to see how wicked and how untruthful this whole world is. We know the value that Jesus Christ put on honesty. He put a very high value on honesty. You know, he don't want people walking around just telling lies all the time and just, you know, don't, there, there's things that, that, you know, that really, really bother me. You know, I don't like to see people walking around lying and cheating and stealing. Now, there's a lot of things, but those, those are, are pet peeves. And, you know, lying is one of the worst things you can possibly do. You have to be a man of honor or a woman of virtue. You have to have integrity in your life. Without that, it's meaningless. Your, your word has to be your bond. People have to be able to look at you as a Christian and trust that what you're saying is the truth and understand that if they listen to you, you're giving them something right from the Bible, not some kind of a, of a bogus baloney that you just made up yourself or that you heard from someone else, didn't read the Bible, or if you did, you made the Bible say what you wanted it to say, not what it truly says. You see, contrary to popular belief, the Bible is, there's no ambiguity. It's a cut and dry, very easy to read book. It's the book, the holy book. God's own words transcribed by humans, but it's cut and dry. If you read the Bible through the Holy Spirit's eyes, you will always, always, always understand the Bible and know what it's saying. Now, if you read it with blinders on, with scales on your eyes, if you believe it through words that you've heard from people like Joseph Prince and Benny Hinn and Joyce Myers and, you know, Joel Olstein, all these people, Rick Warren, Rob Bell, the list goes on and on. Yeah, then you're going to be reading a bunch, you know, reading them through lying eyes. You know, there's an old song by the group called the Eagles from the mid-70s called You Can't Hide Your Lying Eyes. And you can't. You can't hide your lying eyes from God. If you, you know, if you lie, if you, if you just are a liar and, and disreputable and dishonest and, and just unbelievable and just no one takes you seriously anytime... It's like the boy that cried wolf. You know, he just lied and lied and lied. And then when he really, really needed help, no one showed up because they said, man, this guy's a liar. He just lies all the time. Why even lie? You know, I know people try to build themselves up. They try to make themselves into things that they really aren't. And it's just pathetic. When I was in the, in the military for 20 years, most of my time with the Marines, you always see people that just lied, man. There'd be, there would always be, there was, a, there was honor and integrity in the Marines, but you'd always find one person everywhere you went that was always a big liar. They would always embellish all their stories and just and just lie that would just tell things that were unbelievable. And people just would just, you know, they would just say, man, forget it. I'm not going to listen to you. Or they'd make fun of them. Or this person was never relied upon or never trusted or, or just never used for any kind of important job or mission. That's what it's all about, my friends. If you, as a Christian, are a liar, and you just lie all the time, and like the old saying is, you lie through your teeth, or, you know, how do you know this person's lying, <laughs> their lips are moving, something like that. It's funny, but it's not, because it's, it's terrible to have something like that. You have to, you know, you should be able to, as a man or a woman, want people to believe what you say, want them to trust you, to understand that you, your word is your bond, but above all, that your actions for Jesus Christ, living for him and being a witness for him as a Christian are more important than anything else. You have to, you know, anybody, anybody can talk the talk. Talking the talk is the easiest thing in the world, man. Talking 
is is as easy as breathing but can you walk the walk that's what's hard that's what separates the men from the boys that's what separates the rubber from the road if you can walk the walk you just got through talking and you've got to be able to do it you got to be able to to back up what you say with truth the truth of the holy bible and the truth that you are someone who's going to tell the truth and not spread lies and not just tell people things you think they want to hear or that you want them to hear but just from the holy bible because my friends if we are telling anyone anything about the bible anyone anything about god and we lead them astray and tell them a bunch of lies and half truths and they end up in hell guess who's going to answer for them well they're going to answer for themselves you can be you can rest assured of that but guess who else is going to answer for them you are god won't take too kindly to false prophets and false witnesses you don't have to be a big evangelist or a big pastor you can be anybody average joe christian to be a false prophet or false witness and false prophets and false witnesses google it and see what jesus google what does jesus think about false prophets and false witnesses google that find the scripture i'm not giving you scripture because i want everybody to learn to look scripture up if people that get spoon-fed scripture all the time these days there's no work or challenge for them. They just say, oh, well, you know, I've already got this now. And if I tell you something, it, it picks your interest and it makes you want to, to get up and Google it and open a Bible and say, hey, is this Paul kid really telling me the truth? Or is this guy some kind of a, of a flim flam artist? Is he some kind of a, of a con artist himself? You know, is he, is he the pot calling the kettle black? I, you know, you can understand and believe one thing. If I say it on here, and I tell you about it, it's from the Holy Spirit, and it's going to be in the Holy Bible. Whether you choose to believe it or not, it's between you and God. And that's what I have up on my disclaimer for my site. You know, I'm going to tell you the 100% uncut biblical truth. You don't see that very much anymore, or hear it very much anymore, but you'll hear it here. Not not because I'm anybody, you know, I'm the very least in the kingdom of God. I'm nothing but a foot slave to Jesus Christ. I'm the lowest of the lowest slaves. But the Holy Spirit runs strong in me. He runs through my veins, flows through my veins. He's in my heart. He's in my muscles. He's in all my body. And I use him. I use his power. I speak the word of God with my mouth. And I have the same power as the Holy Spirit does. Oh, yeah. We have that power within us. If we serve Christ, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we speak God's word and believe it. The mustard seed faith. The mustard seed, the smallest of all plants. Of all seeds but it makes a huge tree when it's grown oh yeah you got that power within you as well my friends it's time to stop lying it's time to start telling the truth it's time to start manning up and start you know step up to the plate and just say you know if you have been a, a pathological liar in the past there's always a chance to repent just say jesus you know sincerely and just get up fall on your knees and sincerely and, and honestly earnestly repent and say i'm sorry lord jesus for being a pathological liar i'm sorry for being a person that just no one can trust and believe but please let me start over again and let people give me a chance to show people that i can be honest and truthful and they can believe me and the lord will do that for you he will always 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 answer that prayer he wants you to be more holy he wants us all you know jesus wants every one of us to be holy when he went back to heaven after dying on the cross being risen on the third day and then spending lots of time with all of his disciples and being sighted everywhere. He went right back up to heaven on the cloud. His only plan when he left was to have his children spread the word, spread the good news of Jesus Christ. There was no plan B. If we can't spread his word, then people just wouldn't hear. And how are we going to spread his word if we're a bunch of liars? How are we going to spread his word if we're a bunch of flim flam artists and con artists and, and, and false doctrine believers and teachers and and, you know, just teaching lies and half-truths. How are we going to lead anybody to Christ? We're going to lead people to hell. And Satan's just laughing his butt off. It's, he thinks it's so funny how he has Christians buffaloed. It's time to stop lying, my friends. It's time to start being truthful. Honesty is the best policy. And just train yourself to tell the truth. You don't have to impress anybody. All you have to impress, the only person you have to impress in the entire world is Jesus Christ. If he loves you and is happy with you and pleased with you, everything else is gravy. Yeah, of course it's great to have a, a wife and husband that loves you and family and friends and whoever else you have. But the only one you have to please is Jesus Christ. If you have to alter your life 
or change the way you think or behave or live or act to please someone else, uh -uh, it's not happening. Don't waste your time. Just stick with pleasing Jesus. Stick with the Word of God. If you do that, you'll never go wrong. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray everyone who watches this video who lies on a regular basis. and Some people just lie some. Some people tell some big whoppers. Some people just lie all the time. They lie so much they believe their own lies. We all know people like that. I pray, Jesus, that you would convict hearts, that you would pierce hearts, that you would soften hearts, that you would just let people know that lying is not acceptable. It's against your word. It's one of the Ten Commandments. We need, and, and oh yeah, the Ten Commandments are very relevant today. People try to say the cheap grace. Teachers try to say, oh no, no, that's the old law. Very relevant today. Whatever's in God's word from Genesis to Revelation is relevant. So back to my prayer. Jesus, just help people to understand that lying is wrong. People aren't, going to, people aren't going to trust us. They won't believe a word we say. Even when we're not lying, they won't believe us. It's just a vicious circle and it's terrible. And the worst part about it is, is if we're lying about Scripture, if we're lying about the good news of Jesus Christ, because we're leading people to hell by doing that. We can't do that, Jesus. Help us to wake up. Help us to get out of this funk, to get out of this, out of this trap and out of this vicious cycle and just return to you, to be honest. To, and remember, honesty is the best policy to ask you to purify our lips and our tongue and our mouth and make it an honest mouth and an honest tongue, honest lips and speak truth, the truth of the Holy Bible, the good news of Jesus Christ. I ask it in your precious name. Amen. And as always, my friends, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're watching this video, pray this with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done a lot of bad things in my life and I'm really sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you're risen again on the third day, went right back to heaven at the right hand side of the Father. And since then, been preparing a place for all eternity, for all Christians, for us to live together. I pray that you'd forgive me of my sins, Jesus, that you would just clean up my heart, move into my heart, make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the kingdom, make me holy. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. And my friends, Jesus said his own words in the Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved, everyone. And some people don't like to pray alone. If you'd like me to pray the salvation prayer with you, send me a, a private inbox or a comment. I don't post any comments until I read them. And if it's something private, I'll never post it. Once we're done, I'll just keep it there for a prayer in my private section. I won't post it anywhere else. But I'd love to pray for salvation with you. I'll give you my number. You can call me. I do it all the time on Facebook. You can give me a call. If you have a lost loved one, friend or neighbor, who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're sick, you have a sick family member, friend, neighbor, if you have a sick pet, if you need a job, a car, a home, if you need food on the table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, water to drink, whatever it is, send me an inbox or comment, private message. I would love to pray with you. I just live to pray for people, man. It's just my joy. It's a joy deep in my heart to pray for people. It just touches me. I get more out of praying for you than than you do probably. It's just it's just my honor. It's it's my passion. Prayer is. I love prayer. I prayed for the gift of faith and God gave it to me and I have mustard seed faith. And when I pray, I pray believing in my heart, speaking that belief with my mouth, knowing that God will answer one hundred percent of my prayers if I pray within his holy will. My friends, he'll do the same for you if you pray that way. Trust just trust him, test him. Test his word. His words never return empty. Well, thanks again for watching, and please share this video with as many people as you possibly can. And remember, I love you guys, and let's keep marching on. The rapture is going to be any second of any day now. It's imminent. You're going to be right with God, getting the word out, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, sharing it with all, and reaping the harvest, because the harvest is so plentiful right now, it's rotting in the fields. Where are the harvesters? Let's get out and reap the harvest. Love you guys. May God bless you. Thank you.